You're listening to the ADHD Support Talk Radio podcast. ADHD Support Talk is sponsored by addclasses.com. Visit www.addclasses.com to sign up for free webinars today. Hello and welcome back to ADHD Support Talk Radio. I'm your co-host, Lynn Idris, and I help overwhelmed professionals reduce procrastination, improve time management, and get more done with less effort so that they have more time, more energy, and even more money for what they love most. I'm a woman with ADHD myself, so I've been where many of my clients are, and I've come out the other side, so to speak. I've gone from living in a constant state of chaos and underperformance to a life of much more success and fulfillment. But you can learn more about me, what I do, and the programs and services I offer at www.coachingaddvantages.com. That's Coaching Advantages with two Ds. And when you sign up on my website or text the keyword HACK, H-A-C-K, to 444-999, I'll send you my seven foolproof productivity hacks to help you add hours of free time to your weeks by investing just a few smart minutes each day. You know, this is such a busy time of year for my business. My calendar feel like feels like it's just about bursting at the seams some days, and it's a challenge to keep up with my to-do list on the personal side, too. You know, both of my kids have birthdays this month, and they're both leaving for college in a couple of weeks, and I'm managing some repairs at one of my rentals, and all of the rest of life. I know you guys can relate. We've all been here at times. So things are extraordinarily busy right now, but life's always busy, isn't it? You know, each and every one of us has more to do than can realistically be done some days. And that's how life is sometimes, right? But if we don't stay on top of the things we need to do consistently, these periods where life throws extra busyness at us can be an ADHD nightmare. Honestly, if things didn't run pretty smoothly around here the rest of the time, I'd be pretty close to losing my mind right now. If my house were a mess, my laundry out of control, my refrigerator empty, my counters covered in paper, I'd feel like I was stuck at the bottom of a pretty big hole right now. If my office were a shambles and my business bookkeeping unmanaged and my email inbox out of control, I'd be feeling pretty discouraged with myself and pretty discouraged about my life right now. And I know this from experience, right? I mean, I have ADHD myself and I spent a lot of years with a messy house and a mountain of laundry and an empty refrigerator and a countertop covered in bills and mail and kids' papers and all that stuff. And there was no way in those days that I really could have dreamed of running my own business, let alone everything else I do, and maintain any degree of sanity. I'm not tooting my own horn because I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm not any smarter than you. I'm not a harder worker than you. And I know I don't have any more self-discipline than you have. I hate that phrase, self-discipline. It's so judgy and so like laced with shame. I don't do anything you can't learn to do yourself. And for me, one of the cornerstones of how I keep it all together, how I keep all the balls in the air, most of the time, because I'm sure not perfect, is my routine or my routines, plural. For me, it's all about routine and rhythm and habit. And it's about putting my life on autopilot in every way that I can. Often for us ADHDers, it's the most mundane of tasks. It's the day-to-day stuff that is a struggle for us. Things like paperwork, filing, uh, reports, balancing our checkbooks, decluttering or keeping up with, with clutter, paper, laundry, returning phone calls, housework, paying bills, and so on and so on and so on. And as an adult with ADHD myself, like I know how it is. And we tend to beat ourselves up terribly for not following through and getting these mundane things done. I think that part of the reason we beat ourselves up so badly about our struggles with these kinds of things, this, you know, sort of mundane stuff, the stuff I call minutia, is actually because these things are not hard or complex. We know we're able to do these things. We know we're smart enough, intelligent enough. We know we're capable. We have the means to do these things. We know they need to be done and that we should be doing them, but we just can't seem to bring ourselves to get them done or to keep on top of them consistently. So often we have an easier time getting started on the more difficult and challenging tasks we have to do, and we struggle with the easiest things and the simplest tasks and responsibilities. I often say it's the stuff that's not rocket science that we struggle with the most. Often if that stuff were rocket science, it would actually probably be a little easier for us. And there are lots of reasons for this. There are lots of reasons we struggle to keep up and follow through on what we need to do, let alone struggle to move ahead. 
And it's really important for you to hear this, like really hear this. The reasons you get stuck, the reasons you get shut down, the reasons you don't, you know, get done and follow through on what you intend are not because there's something wrong with you morally or that you're weak or lazy or have some kind of character flaw or lack self-discipline. Again, I hate that expression. The reasons we get overwhelmed, the reasons we get, you know, shut down, we don't follow through on things are really tied to how our brains are wired, not tied to our character. And they're actually pretty simple to address, they're behaviors. And when we look at them clearly and we can analyze why we're stuck rather than go into blame and shame and beat ourselves up, you know, it is relatively simple. But of course, you know that simple doesn't always mean easy. They're not the same thing. So our executive functions get in the way, right? That That's part of, of what goes on with us, you know, those of us with ADHD. Uh, Obviously, I can't go too deeply into executive function in this podcast, but just really briefly and sort of in layman's terms, your executive functions are your higher order mental processes. They're the things I always think of are they're sort of like the human only mental processes. And they impact skills like organizing information in time and in space. So, you know, physical organization and organization of, of information in our minds starting and finishing projects and self-regulation. So that organization of information piece, that one is really big for us. And it's something we tend to struggle with, especially when we try to do that in our minds. And this is referred to in different ways, but I always refer to it. and, And the one I'm most familiar with is what we call the mental manipulation of information. If it's making sense of information in your mind, you know, organizing it, sequencing it, prioritizing and analyzing things in order to make decisions and to take action. And this can cause us to feel overwhelmed, right? This executive function intensive stuff, all of the deciding and the prioritizing and the mental organization often causes us to be overwhelmed. It often sort of drains the our, our sort of mental energy, which leads to procrastination. And of course, procrastination is huge for us, right? It's probably the number one complaint of people who come to me for help behind feelings of unmet potential. And of course, those two things are are completely inter- intertwined. But the toll on this, on us, the toll it takes can be tremendous in our personal lives, in our professional lives, in our relationships, and especially on how we feel about ourselves over time. Your executive functions are believed to be processed in your frontal lobes. And these processes are very fuel intensive, so to speak. They burn up a lot more brain fuel, glucose actually, than less complex processes do. And all your executive function processes pull on the same kind of brain energy. So when you're doing a bunch of executive function intensive processing, you're more likely to feel mentally fatigued and sometimes physically fatigued too. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician, I'm not a you know, neurobiologist. This is my sort of layman's understanding of, of executive function and, and hopes that it'll help you understand what really gets in your way. Difficulty with setting priorities and deciding what to do and when to do it is part of this struggle with the mental manipulation of information piece of our executive functions. So many of us really struggle with prioritization, especially when we have way too many things that we need to do. You know, when our to-do lists or what we need to get done are not clearly prioritized in advance, when we're not doing things on autopilot, we often find ourselves acting on the things that are the most, quote, shiny, you know, the things that are the most interesting or stimulating for us, or the things that are the easiest for us, you know, the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. And those things are very often not what really need to be done first. They're really not the true priorities. So this lack of prioritization can keep us from getting things done and feeling productive, truly productive. I saw someone post on a Facebook page about this, you know, a while back, talking about how deciding what to do next all day leaves them exhausted. And I get that. And that's what I'm talking about. That's that you know, that mental manipulation of information that's really wearing down your executive function energy. So we have that, you know, mental manipulation of information piece, which is very executive function energy intensive. And it leaves us with little energy left to do stuff. So when you're deciding all day long what to do next, 
you know, you've got very little left to actually take action. And this is another part of executive function that is often a big struggle for us, that taking action, it's what we call activation. It's simply getting started on something, you know, and things that are, are big or complex or not really well defined for us are difficult when it comes to activation because again, those executive function processes are a struggle. We need to make sense of these things in our mind and get started on them and we can drain our executive function fuel tank pretty quickly. You know, so much thinking and deciding all day, where's our brains out? Like literally, this is huge. So when you spend your whole day, your whole lives really thinking and deciding what to do next, you're burning a whole lot of brain power and wearing yourselves out. And we know how easily our heads get in the way of our ability to get things done, right? So my favorite place to start to improve my clients' ability to get stuff done, their productivity overall, is by using the power of autopilot. It's a rather simple concept and it's sort of intuitive once you get the hang of it, but it can be huge in payback, both from a product productivity perspective and from an energy perspective. So think about it like putting your life on cruise control and the benefit can be immeasurable. I think the best way to free our, you know, our sort of our, our mental ram, so to speak, free our, free our minds to reduce stress and to improve productivity without leaving our brains, you know, fuel tanks empty is to establish systems and ways of doing things that take advantage of the power of habit and routine. Now, words like habit and routine can really often elicit negative emotions for many adults with ADD for a lot of reasons, but from years of struggle and from our natural aversion to what's boring and mundane. But the power of creating routines that put much of your life on autopilot really can't be overstated. So first, we know that things that happen repeatedly as a matter of habit are processed in a different part of the brain, the part of the brain that's used for instinct and reflex. And it's much less evolved than the parts of the brain that handle our executive functions. And that sort of lower part of the brain, so to speak, uses much less energy. It burns much less glucose than those higher order mental processes that are our executive functions. So habit and routine burns way less glucose than deciding and prioritizing and all of that mental manipulation of information stuff that we were talking about. So we really wanna take advantage of that when we can. And of course, there are many things we do on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis that are repeated, you know, over and over and over and over again. But when we don't have well-established routines or habits that put these things on autopilot, we use considerable resources in accomplishing them. So for every single repetitive little task that you do over and over, you're fighting that battle against activation over and over. You're fighting that battle of, you know, of thinking and deciding and prioritizing and all of that mental organization over and over and over. And it's exhausting, but it really doesn't have to be such a struggle. When you harness the power of routines, you put things on autopilot, you completely take your own head and it struggles with activation and procrastination and prioritization and overwhelm out of the equation. So when you can get your head out of the equation, sometimes life can be a lot easier. And the simplest example I can give you of this is brushing your teeth. So by the time we're adults, most of us have a good routine for brushing our teeth. Not all of us, but most of us. So there are set points in your day when you automatically brush your teeth without really having to give it a whole lot of thought. You know, most of us will automatically brush our teeth like after breakfast and before we go to bed. You know, we don't wake up in the morning and have to get out our calendar and have to think about, you know, when we're going to squeeze that in, how much time is this going to take and where am I going to find that much time? And, you know, we don't have to break down the components of brushing our teeth into, into pieces. We don't have to do that mental manipulation of information. We don't have to think about, you know, where am I going to find the toothbrush? Where am I going to find the toothpaste? Where is there a sink? And, and I'm going to have to take them both there. And I'm going to have to have approximately, what, 60 or 90 seconds or whatever the dentist tell you. And I'm going to have to stop at the start at the top left rear molar and brush up and down. I mean, you really don't have to do all of this thinking. You, you know, you get your toothbrush, you put your toothpaste in on it and you start brushing. If we had to go through all this thought process every time we needed to brush our teeth, we'd have the same problems with getting that done that we do with other things in our lives. So we've already put our toothbrushing habit on autopilot by developing natural routines that work for us. And for the most part, you know exactly where your toothbrush and toothpaste are. And if you don't, that's another subject, but generally, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to find. 
But seriously, like creating structure through routines and through habits that put the things you do on autopilot will take that whole struggle we have with deciding, that whole struggle with mental organization of information, and that whole activation getting started struggle that comes from our executive functions will also be completely out of the equation for us. And that's extremely important for those of us with ADD. So the more you can get out of your own head, so to speak, and into a subconscious habit, the more your life will be on cruise control or autopilot and the less stress you'll be under. And this works extremely effectively for things that happen often or things that happen repeatedly. So let's look at some really simple examples. I'm not gonna go too far you know, down this, down this path, but in terms of housework, you know, the more boring mundane things like laundry, groceries, meal planning, cleaning, those kinds of things are great things to put on auto- autopilot. We all also have to do things for our work lives that could be put on autopilot reporting requirements, paperwork, filing, and so on. So the more you put on autopilot and do through routine, the less your mind can get you stuck in inactivity because again, it completely takes the mental energy out of the equation. Creating patterns and routines and rhythms in your life is an incredibly easy way to improve your productivity and get things done. We're simply talking about having a sort of natural rhythm to your life so that you don't need to use so much energy. You don't need to think so much to get done what you need to do. So the more rhythm and routine you have in your life, the more you put on autopilot, the less energy those things are gonna take, and the more time and the more energy you have for the things that matter most to you, your interests, your hobbies, remember those things, hobbies? The people and the things that you care about most, and even for yourself. So give it a try, you know, start to pay attention to what happens repeatedly, what happens daily, weekly, or monthly, and take a look at how you can create a rhythm or a routine that you can put on autopilot for yourself and start slowly. That's one thing I always recommend. You know, research has shown that focusing on changing fewer behaviors at a time makes it easier to solidify those behaviors for the long haul. So to begin with, just pick one to three things that happen each day or each week and focus on finding ways to turn them into a routine. Add one or two more when those things become no brainers, when those things are on full autopilot for you. And of course, if you need help, you know, this is the kind of stuff an appropriately trained ADHD coach can make really easy for you and can help you put the systems, tools, and rhythms in place for yourself that will help you have more time and energy for what matters most to you. So I hope that helps and I hope it gave you some things to think about. You know, exactly how you make these things work is gonna be a little bit different for each of you, but I'm hoping that plants some seeds for you and gets you thinking about how you can use the power of autopilot in your life. So thanks again for listening. My name is Lynn Idris, and you can learn more about me, what I do, the programs and services I offer at www.coachingaddvantages.com. It's Coaching Advantages with two Ds. And when you sign up on my website or text the keyword HACK, H-A-C-K, to 444-999, I will send you my seven foolproof productivity hacks that can help you add hours of free time to your weeks by investing just a few smart minutes each day. So thanks again for listening. And as always, I appreciate your attention. Take care.